Al fucking doctor. King King on the beach, beach. Yeah. Hey. So we're in a new venue, man. What are you gonna teach me today? Today we're gonna talk about board climbing. Yeah, because it's like a thing now. Board oh, climbing. What was it not a thing before? It used to be just climbing. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's board climbing. It's very fashion. Tell me the history. So there was rocks and then people climbed on rocks and it rained. So people built an indoor wall and filled it as many holes as they could get so that they could climb it and that was climbing. And now that's board climbing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Sweet. So we're gonna walk around the centre check out all the boards and you're going to teach us how beginners should begin their board journey mm. to not being bored on a board. <laughs> cool. Cool. Let's start. So where are we? Okay, today we're at Blockfit uh, in Brixton, London. Yeah. And they got loads of boards here. It's, so it's boards brilliant. only here, isn't boards it? Boards only, exactly. This is where a lot of the hardcore people hang out because look at it, man. Yeah. yeah. It's intimidating. Well, I think it's, to be honest, just like... You know, we just try to look cool. And we'll be like, look at me, I'm so hardcore. But actually, it's kind of just like normal climbing. When I started climbing, I went straight to the board. So I think it's, you know, get on it. Okay, so they've got four different types of boards here. So we got here what they call the beast board, which is like, like a good, like normal board. Lots of holds everywhere, just holds everything in lots of different shapes. So you can see you got like slopers, pockets, crimps. Undercuts, like everything basically. So it's like really versatile. You can train all sorts of different grips and with resin you have a lot more like different shapes so you can have like a lot more variety and that's pretty fun. I think it's good for variety of grips. Okay. Yeah, cool. I think that's really nice for that. Let's move on to the next board. Ooh, what is this one? Okay, this one is uh, woody, so you can see that most of the holes are made of wood. Why people like that, or why it's good, is that you have uh, low friction, so it's like really skin friendly, you don't like lose skin too much. But also because it's low friction, you have to be really precise, because uh, if you catch it wrong, or you like pull too hard, or reach it poorly, then you're going to slide off. So yeah, that's the that's old woody, which is a variant on the regular board. Woody, cool. Woody. Is this what yeah. the Toy Story character was named after? Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. What is this one? This is a Woody, but also a symmetry board. So you can see that, um, yeah, it's symmetrical, basically. So you can do a climb on one side and then do it the opposite way so that you, you, know, you don't become like right-handed or left-handed in climbing, you're just like really even. It's the yin and yang of the board world. Exactly. Yay. What board is this, Yen? This is the moon board. So the moon board is like a standardized board. It's got specific holds in specific directions, all in specific places, so that lots of different places can have the same board. And there's an app that goes with it, so you can put up your climbs on it, and then everyone can sort of share their climbs, no matter where they are. It's really popular, it's really fun. And yeah, globalization climbing thing. Sharing is caring. And it's got cool LEDs. Yeah, exactly. RGB, board yeah. of life. You don't have to remember things. You can just like follow the colors. I wish life was like that. <laughs> this is a weird one. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, I'm crack climbing. What's this for? This is for uh, practicing crack climbing because it's super weird. Yeah. Because <laughs> instead of holding things, you like jam your hand into it and it's really weird. Um, but you get a lot outdoors. Which that is sounds cool. unsafe. It's super painful. I've done some, it's really painful. Quite rare in like the UK, but in some places in the US, they have like entire like leading lines on Big it. Big cracks. Yeah, because they have lots of cracks there. Right? So like in the UK, we have like small cracks, so it's not that popular. So you're saying America has a lot of big cracks. <laughs> okay, cool, let's move to the next bit. <laughs> oh, are you moving oh. that whole wall? Oh, I'm so strong. <laughs> what is this? Okay, this is like a, a kind of like a system board. So this is uh, Dave's kind of little invention. And Dave's he uses, the owner, isn't he? Dave is the owner and he is, um, you know, Blockfit Dave. He does the training here. And he uses it for like endurance drills, power endurance drills. You kind of just go around without having to take up too much space. You can just like really hit all your forearms with all the different grips. And you can practice clipping. So it's just like a really neat way to fit lots of training into a small space. It's quite clever, really. So cool. that's here. 
Sweet, and he also uses this to test people to see where they're at. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a standardized board and he like goes, how many moves can you do? And then you go, <laughs> I'm so pumped. Something like that. <laughs> cool, perfect. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Nice microphone. Thanks. What is this board? This is a circuit board. But this goes in circles and you go on it forever until you get really pumped. And I actually love being really pumped because it's like it's like struggling to breathe, but in your whole body and mostly in your forearms is great. And then you have like the rising panic and then you learn to deal with it. So that's what this is for, endurance. Oh, you're so deep and that sounds horrible. I know. Cool. Endurance board, basically. basically. Endurance circuit. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Lap it out. So what is your beginner routine that you tell people to do? Okay, so first of all, try to get to the top of the wall. It's okay. easier said than done, isn't it? It's a lot easier said than done. So to actually get to the top of the wall, you need to find the easiest way which is quite hard because it's like a million options. So what you're doing here is really you're practicing your judgment. You're trying to work out what makes a move easy, what makes a move hard. And this is a, like a fantastic thing to build on because it's your foundation and will help you to read roots and work out moves so much quicker in like the future. So first thing I would do is I would look at all the holds and work out which are the best hand holds. Let's say I'm gonna try to get to the top of this wall with like minimal energy and we look for really big holds. So I wouldn't even worry about starting from the bottom. I just start at like sort of chest height and I'm gonna touch all the holds basically and see what's in cut and what feels good. Okay, so I've inspected all the holds at sort of like head height, in fact, not even chest height, head <laughs> height. And I think the best hold is this pocket here. This is nice and deep, I get three fingers in it. Cool. So I'm gonna start there. Okay, so I found my first hold, great. What I'm gonna do now is gonna look above it, probably about a, uh, what's this called? Um, Elbow to hand sure. distance away, roughly, from the first hold and see on sort of that line, what's the best hold. And I'm gonna try to look for it. What about your feet? Like, don't worry about the feet. Like, do the feet later, start with the hand holds, so you're not like juggling so many balls. Okay. So now I found my hand holds, so the next thing I need to do is like have a rough idea what footholds I want. So um, I don't want to restrict my footholds too much, so I can find the easiest way up. So what I'm going to do is look for the biggest footholds, it's going to give me the most stability. And the great thing about this spot is at a glance, you can see immediately what they are. So big green, massive, big red, it's massive, big purple. I like basically anything bigger than my head is really good. <laughs> so I'm just going to aim for using those holds cool. and where I kind of need to put a foothold later. Sure, so find footholds that are bigger than your head mm -hmm. unless you have a really big head. Or just the biggest ones because depending on the board, not every ball has such... It just depends. <laughs> and depends on your head size. It depends. Okay, cool. <laughs> How was it better? That was pretty good. That was like kind of a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be, but because I knew where the big footholds were, I was like, I was like prepared when the hold turned out to be slightly worse than I thought it was. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm gonna repeat that process and try to find maybe up to five different ways to get to the top of the wall. So let's see you run through those different attempts. Okay.
So you just did that five different times. Yeah. And you so, did different routes each time? Yes. So I've effectively made five different climbs, which it's like kind of gets increasingly slightly harder because you start with the easiest way mm. to the top and the second easiest. Um, but that works out quite well because you also built your session up in intensity. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and then what you've got now is like quite a good like foundation, a feel for the climbs. And that can also be kind of your like reference point to start working on more specific things. So the great thing about the board is that it's like a really versatile tool because there's lots of holds. So you can think of about specific movements or like styles of climbing that you want to work on and improve it and then um, and then you can build a climb around that. So with your five, you kind of have a basis and then you can start editing it and that's quite an easy way to set roots. So say we had really big footholds at first, but if you say, I want to work on some smaller footholds, you just change your footholds, find the small ones. If you're going to do bigger moves, so instead of like having whatever hand to elbow distance, you might start looking at holds, shoulder to hand distance apart and just kind of go in the same trajectory. Or if it's specific grip types, then you sort of look around it. So if you're on crimps, find the crimps near there, slopers, find the slopers near there, that sort of thing. And then at least you kind of, that's quite easy to build a session. Cool, so play around with it. Especially yeah. if you're starting off, do what's the end did, play around and you'll get strong. Cool. Okay, thanks Yen. Thanks for the breakdown of your basics of board climbing. You're actually going to be teaching lessons here, aren't you? Yes. So when is this course happening? So it's starting 5th of January, every Saturday at BlockFit. We've got three courses, board essentials, board footwork, and using your full span. Awesome, so if you want to get taught by a legend, check out CN's website down below. <laughs> Book on to that lesson, and Sien is as nice as she seems in the videos. It's true. If you use the promo code BOBAT, oh. you get a £10 discount. So, I didn't yeah. Know you were going to do that. Do cool. Yeah. Uh, sweet, guys. So, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you want some more specific techniques to do on the board, mm -hmm. comment down below. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to give a basic overview. Mm -hmm. Let us know if we missed anything. Yeah. If you like what you saw, Check out Blockfit, we're in Brixton. It's the only training specific gym in London. Mm -hmm. It's cool, yeah. it's edgy. It's edgy. And there's cake at the market like five minutes away. Oh my God, there's so much good food. Like, <laughs> I don't think about it. Okay, cool. Thanks, Yen. Thanks for teaching. Bye. Bye.